Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out the Mica ON3 powered bookshelf speakers. Stay tuned. So the Mica ON3 powered bookshelf speakers can be had for about $90 on Amazon.com. So taking a look around the speakers, we can see that they are covered in a nice dark walnut veneer and the grills are made of a nice textured gray fabric that looks excellent, I might add. Taking a look at the front of each speaker, we can see that at the bottom lies a base reflex port for low frequency enhancement. Right above that is the magnetic fabric grill covering the three inch paper cone, paper dust cap, rubber surround, uh, full range driver, which I might add has a neodymium magnet and is quite a lightweight driver. Additionally, on the front of the powered unit, you will find an auxiliary jack and the infrared receiver for the included remote. On the right side of the power speaker, you will find a multifunction knob slash button, which is used for controlling volume, the DSP setting, and power. It also lights up blue around the edge. On the back of the powered speaker, you will find five-way binding posts to connect the unpowered speaker, a power switch, RCA inputs, a power LED, and the 18 volt 2 amp socket. On the back of the unpowered speaker, you will simply find the five-way binding post speaker level inputs. Additionally, inside the box, you will also find the 18 volt 3 amp power adapter, a decent length of speaker wire with tinned ends, a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, the included remote to control volume, power, and DSP settings, and some rubber feet, which unfortunately I have misplaced and no longer have to show you, but it comes with rubber feet you can stick on the bottom of the speakers. So obviously these speakers are very aesthetically pleasing. They have a really nice walnut finish, like I've said, a nice contrast with the gray fabric grill, but how do they actually perform in terms of sound quality? The aforementioned DSP settings are quite interesting because there's two of them, one of which is a more neutral, I guess, setting. The other one is an enhanced bass boost um, to give them more low end. Now, despite having this DSP capability, I personally found that it could have been used a little bit better. The neutral setting sounds pretty okay, the bass is decently even, but there is a slight hump at around 100 hertz on both settings, in fact that gives the impression of a really tough low end, but in reality, it kind of makes the speaker struggle a little bit, especially at higher volumes, because especially with the second DSP setting with enhanced bass, which is really just a bit of a further boost at that 100 hertz area, um, or around there, it's, it might not be specifically there, but unfortunately with the size of the small driver, and it being a full range driver handling all the frequencies of the entire box, it struggles a little bit with intermodulation distortion. Intermodulation distortion is basically when a full range speaker or a speaker is trying to produce multiple frequencies at once, and usually the lower frequencies that it's producing because they require more energy to produce and more movement of the cone, they will in turn affect the higher frequencies the speakers are trying to producing and cause them to sound distorted. You'll be able to hear that in the sound demo shortly. At lower volumes though, these speakers sound pretty good. The treble though, I found to be a little bit too inaccurate for my tastes. I'm a little bit spoiled. I have really great studio monitors that I use that I'm used to listening to, so switching to these was a bit different. So I had to kind of rearrange my expectations of what to get from these. They do sound pretty okay though, and I think for most people, they will definitely perform more than adequately for their needs. Uh, especially if you have something like, you know, a little turntable, if you want to have a vinyl record, you know, set up. You will need a preamp, the RCA inputs on the back of these. It is not a phono preamp, it's just line level. So if you want to use a turntable that does not have a preamp built in, you will have to use an external unit. They would also make a great set of computer speakers as well, I think, for someone who might not be listening at crazy loud volumes, just for some background music at the computer or, you know, basic media consumption. These will do more than adequately for that. And especially with the great looks, they'll blend in with your setup quite nicely, I would say. So yeah, here's a sound demo of the Mica ON3 and its two DSP settings compared to my custom-built DSP-tuned and room-corrected studio monitors.
So yeah, hopefully from that demo you can hear that while they're not quite as accurate as something like my custom built speakers, they do have quite an impressive low end for their size. Now that being said, the issue of intermodulation distortion is still there. You could probably hear it was quite prevalent on the funk track with, the, with just the bass and drums. You could hear the bass was affecting the cymbals in sort of a negative way. So in that way, they don't quite perform too great. Now granted, that was at a much higher volume to show you their limits. At lower volumes, this is not an issue at all. If you're listening at a quieter level, you will not hear this as much. So overall, what do I think about these? Well, at 90 bucks, there's a lot of other speakers in this price range that could compete directly with these. For instance, Micah's own PB42X is the powered version of their MB42X speaker um, which contains a 4-inch woofer and tweeter for around the same price range as this. And my immediate question is, what's the performance difference? Do you gain anything with adding a tweeter in there and a slightly larger woofer? You lose the DSP capabilities in the remote, however, if the speaker doesn't sound as good in the first place, the DSP features are sort of irrelevant in my opinion. There's also other offerings from that of Edifier and Microlab. Um, they also produce some other speakers that are in this price range, even cheaper, um, that also have tweeters that could perform similarly to these. So my question is, do these really make sense? Because the full range is nice, you do get a nice image, I will say that. The stereo image is pretty good because everything is coming from a single point source. But there are other aspects that suffer because of the driver handling every single frequency. So yeah, would I recommend these? It really depends on what you need, I think. Because for lower level listening where you want an enhanced low end and a classy looking speaker, these will do excellently for you. Especially if stereo imaging is important. However, if you're looking for something that might have a flatter frequency response, I would probably look elsewhere. As in that regard, these don't quite perform as well. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and if you do subscribe, make sure to hit that notification bell to know every single time I upload. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.